hope you're having a nice day. So here I am today to talk about Lisa Comfort Home Fabrics, which obviously I know should feel like it sits on the other channel, but I wanna talk just a bit through the sort of fabric process because I think that's interesting for you guys, but also talk about how you could use it to make clothes as well. Um, so I've got lots of different things here on the table. I've got the finished fabrics, which I might just start off with by showing you. So um, this is the Peacock Lassie in navy. Um, I don't think I've got all of them actually here, let's have a look. And this is um, Bombay Spring in the pink colourway. And I think there was one down here. This is a stripe off, but then we've got it here in the teal. And then there is also a Peacock Lassie in the white. But I don't think I've got the final. Oh no, here it is. There. So um, you'll have seen, if you're on our mailing list, you'll have seen that these came out last week. They're on cotton twill. And so they are soft furnishing fabrics, but I have made many a dress out of soft furnishing fabrics in the past. I've made an Elsie dress, I've made a grey dress, and I've made uh, Ava skirts, or similar, or pencil skirts. Um, so this is what I'm, I'm wearing one of our, our Ava skirt pattern here in the Peacock Lassie. Um, and I thought it'd be yeah, just interesting for you guys to see how it makes up um, in uh, garments as well, because I think it's absolutely fine. There's, this skirt requires a certain amount of structure, so I think it um, looks really nice in this. So you could do that, but I think you also look, you know, look really nice in some of those kind of more structured big skirts like the Elsie skirt. Um, oh, hello, Coco. Hi, you guys come to say hello. Hi, darling. Yes. Oh, careful, careful, it's slippy. Anyway, I worked with um, P and Me, um, who, the woman who works P and Me, who's an old friend, we grew up together uh, back in Yorkshire, and she's called Ibby. Um, and she has been doing lots of work for us on the print side, so Lisa Comfort Home, and also um, starting to do stuff for Sew Over It Fabrics as well. Um, and how it starts off is we do mood boards, and I sort of pull in colors, and. Uh, particular sort of styles that I like um, and one thing that is important to me is I don't want anything to be too graphic-y so I like the idea of hand uh, painted pattern and design um, and I wanted something that was a combination of flowers but then also maybe something a little bit more contemporary so with the animal print and maybe also some animals in there so this was one of the initial designs that she did um, and I decided I didn't like the leopard, but we kept the bird and some of this design. And then she also did uh, a peacock and we kept that. And you'll notice that the scale of the design, um, so if I stand up, the scale of the design is much bigger here um, than it is here. And that's part of the process, is working out the right scale. You'll also notice that this first print is a bit like a combination of the two prints that we ended up with, so with Bombay Spring and uh, Bombay Lassie. Lassie. So, um, yeah, those two are what I think I remember, I'm trying to remember all the, it was so long, this process, all the stages, but I think I remember, yeah, let's take that out and take that out and let's see that if it stands on its own. And then um, this version um, was kind of where the Lassie got developed from and this version was actually where the Bombay Spring got developed from. And so we did them there with a very dark navy background, but I felt that might be too dark for home. Um, then I knew that I wanted one with a light background, although this background wasn't quite light enough in the end, so we had to bring that brighter and brighter. And again, you can see that looks like the Bombay Spring there, and there it looks more like uh, the Lassie. Um, I don't think that one sits on this, it's another version. So once we kind of got to that stage and we pulled out the prints and got them separated into two designs, I then uh, worked on the scale. Now the first ones that were printed, the scale I think was not right. Um, and also nor was the colour, but let's talk about the scale first. So um, you can see it here on, I think these are about the same scale. So you can see it there on the white lassie, it's much bigger. Um, and again here on this one it's also much bigger so I felt like it was a lot better a design smaller so the next phase for Peacock Lassie was to bring it down to a different percentage um, 
And so these are what we call strike-offs, which are printers um, print sort of sections of it so that you can see what it will look like. Oh, okay, okay. She's attached herself to the end of this fabric. So this was more like the scale, you can see this is what we went with in the end. But there's there are very slight different variations here, one slightly smaller percentage than the other. Um, and we did that with all of them um, as well. So when we came to pop Bombay Spring, I also wanted it shrunk, shrunk, shrunk down um, because here it's much bigger and I don't think it's as nice. So these are sort of, it's a bit like when you're designing patterns, in fact, it's there's lots of very small little tweaks and changes that you make that you think wouldn't make a difference, but actually make a massive difference. So the next thing was the colour. So this was one of the first colours of Bombay Spring and I just felt as fabulous as it was in the UK, that was just too vibrant and most people's homes wouldn't be able to take that. And so that's why we ended up toning it down. We also took the orange out because I'm not a huge fan of orange and we toned down the pink as well. And I think that's a much more palatable um, colour. And we did the same with the other one. I'm trying to think if I've got a hot pink one here. No, I haven't. But the pink was too bright originally as well. We also changed the background of the peacock glassy and the ivory because that was almost pinky in tone. So we changed that almost to the colour of the base cloth. So really basically just ivory. Um, oh, here's a pink one. Yeah, you can see there. Too bright isn't it and also I didn't like the colours again the oranges so I wanted more greens and blues and other pinks and purples brought in to the pink colourway. The blue that we were trying to achieve here as well on the on the lassie this is a slightly enlarged version you can see there's been so many strike offs um, so that blue again I found too vibrant now that blue I found was too dark so we ended up with somewhere in the middle which I'm very, very happy about, which is this lovely warm navy. Um, it's almost like a French navy. So it does mean that it's very easy to wear as a garment because that's a really flattering warm navy. Um, but you can see, yeah, there's a lot of stages to that. And just starting with an initial design doesn't mean that when that's on the repeat or when that's on fabric that it's then gonna work. We have had lots of other designs that we've got done and we've just ended up not liking them as fabrics. So um, I'm very, very pleased with this collection, but I would love to see some garments in it because let's face it, I've got these two sides of me, the interior home side and the sewing dressmaking side, and they merge and cross over for me. So it'd be nice to see if they do that for you as well. Um, and if anyone is brave enough to make something out of, I mean, I think actually another Ava skirt in the pink, where's the one that actually ended up the right color in that, Bombay Spring, or that, I think that could be really cute because you've got the darker color so you can pull it in for the tights. So yeah, or maybe a really fabulous big Elsie skirt for some event. Anyway guys, um, I look forward to seeing your potential makes out there. Obviously it's perfect for accessories, so if you're into bag making, that kind of thing, it's perfect for that. Uh, we have done a bag range, so if you're interested to see what made up products you can buy from Lisa Comfort Home, we'll make sure we link to it. And if you're sharing any of your makes on Instagram, obviously if it's a sew over pattern, then please, please, please do use our hashtags for those patterns. But also it'd be great to hashtag Lisa Comfort Home um, if you're using our fabric, because um, we'll search for that as well. It'd be nice to see that and get inspired. So that is it for this week. Um, this month's been a bit of a kind of higgledy-piggledy one or the start of the year. It's not been the same structure that I've normally done on this channel. And that's just because I've been in India and then had this massive kind of release. So I think by the time we get back to March, I'll be into a, a more regular pattern. Um, so thank you for bearing with me. But I also think it's quite nice to mix it up sometimes. And obviously I've done the makes videos and the fabric hauls for a long time. So it is nice every so often to do something different. Um, but if there are any suggestions from you guys of what you want to hear from me on this channel, or see from me, then please do let me know. Tutorials, that sort of thing, won't be sitting on this channel anymore. That's always gonna be on Stitch School. But if there's anything other than that that you'd like me to talk about, then please, yeah, let me know. Right, we have got to get on today. We've got lots of meetings. Um, it's a Lisa Comfort Home Day today, filming this on a Tuesday. 
Um, and yeah, busy, 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 busy. I sort of looked at my diary and until the end of April, it's pretty chopper. On top of that, I'm moving house. So I'm gonna be very busy. Have a lovely weekends, guys. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>